Friends, boy, do I have some good news for you today. We're in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 5. Nietzsche, Frederick Nietzsche, declared 139 years ago to the world, God is dead. And uh, this secularist who had left his Christian roots just looked around and it just didn't feel like God was anywhere doing anything. And so the declaration, God is dead. And most Christians, when we don't have our way, we don't declare that, but we do feel like God has abandoned us in some way. And I've talked to some people recently that because of the pandemic, because of political events, because of social chaos, that God is not involved in our lives anymore. And what really has happened is we've connected God magically with our American persuasion, or we've connected God magically with our personal preferences and thinking that God has to do what we expect him to do. And then it doesn't happen. And we think, wow, is God dead? So in 1 Samuel chapter 5, we discover that God is not dead and he can handle himself, my friends. So to set the stage from chapter 4, the Ark of the Covenant is captured. Remember the Ark of the Covenant is that box, that chest that was in the Holy of Holies that has all the precious artifacts of God, the law, uh, the manna, the, the different things that point, Aaron's rod that points back to God. And so um, this ark is captured. Now, how did it get captured? Because the, the Israelites mistakenly, they make a bad decision. They take the ark with them into battle. They had lost a battle to the Philistines, so they said, I know, We'll force God to win. We'll put God's arm behind his back by putting the ark with the army. But instead, the ark is captured. Bad decision. But then the Philistines follow it with a bad decision. They think magically, wow, we worship the god Dagon. We'll put the ark of the covenant into our temple with Dagon and we'll have double whammy power. But they wake up in the next morning to find Dagon fallen over prostrate before the ark. So they think, wow, that's strange. It must be an accident. So they set him back up again, erect. And the next morning, they find the same thing. He's prostrate before the ark, but his head and his hands are cut off. They freak out. They also discover that everyone in this town of Ashdod is breaking out with tumors. They all point back to the ark. So they decide, another bad decision, <laughs> let's move the ark to uh, Gath. And Gath will house the Ark of the Covenant, another Philistine town. And everyone in Gath begins to break out with tumors. So they make another bad decision. And they make the ark go to Ekron. And that's a bad decision. People begin to break out with boils or tumors again. Wow, what's happening? Well, two things to note. One is, we are not people of magic. Magic is making a, a saying, a potion, words, an action that we believe forces God. God has to do what we want him to do. God is opposed to anything that you and I think puts God's arm behind his back. We, in prayer, are cooperating with his will. And even when we say the name in the name of Jesus, that's not like a rabbit's foot. That's not magic. It's in the name of who he is and our faith and relationship with him that we pray in his name. So we don't use magic. Magic doesn't work. And then the second thing is truth always rises to the surface, just as if you submerged a beach ball or you submerged a log or some wood. It's eventually going to rise and float to the surface. So while you're running around saying, well, I can't go to the restaurant I want to eat at. I can't uh, get my vaccine. I can't do this. I can't do that. My political party didn't win. What am I going to do? Uh, God is not running around. God is not worried. God is not frightened. 
He is on the throne. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2.14, Thanks be to God who always, who always, who always leads us in triumph. This is the persecuted Paul. This is the Paul who will be shipwrecked. This is the Paul who will have a snake bite. This is the Paul who will be misunderstood. This is the Paul who will be rejected by his own people. That doesn't mean that it's the end of God, that God is dead and God is somehow not here present in our lives. Paul states it right. God will always lead us in triumph. We don't lead him. He leads us. And my friends today, the good news is not only in the end does God win. That means truth, goodness, beauty, love, peace, faith, all these hope, all these things win in the end because God wins in the end. But it also means God is still victorious today. Father, walk us through this day with victory because you are on the throne. In Jesus' name, amen.